Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we're going to talk about some EDM conspiracy theories. I asked you across social media uh, what you thought were some EDM conspiracy theories, and we're going to kind of talk about the uh, best ones here. So let's do it. Fred again and John Summit are industry plants. Okay, so uh, I actually mentioned Fred again being a potentially an industry plant in my top uh, songs or albums of the year this past year. And um, I still kind of stand by that statement. I do think Fred again is an industry plant, but in like a good way. I, I don't know if this makes sense, but I know a lot of like kind of industry plants are, they're like, nor I feel like generally they're not good. Um, but Fred again has got some real talent. I would say his albums are kind of pretty mediocre, not gonna lie. Uh, but some of his soloing stuff and his uh, production and just the way that he like, he really just knows that and uses and utilizes tools uh, within the EDM realm for some really cool club and, and dance mixes. And so uh, I think Fred again is great. Um, I don't have a ton to, to go off of for John Summit, but I, I would say Fred again's probably industry plant. He, he literally came out of nowhere and then sort of overtook all of 2022 and sort of revitalized kind of club dance music again uh, into the mainstream. And so um, I would say it's a good industry plant, but uh, I, I would agree with that, I think, for the most part. A classic, uh, Bracken and Tristam are the same person. So this one circulated the Monster Cat uh, community spheres for a long time. Uh, for one main reason, that's because both Bracken and Tristam were kind of really uh, like mysterious. They both didn't really show their face ever. They didn't really do any other like social media marketing kind of things. They were just like, here's a song and there was nothing else really to go off of. And so uh, the one thing that I do think is interesting is that uh, they, each of them do separately sing on, I believe it's Frame of Mind. Um, is it Frame of Mind or Far Away? I'm pretty sure it's Frame of Mind. And so both Tristan sings a line and then Bracken does. And so there is a bit of a difference. It, it is a little more subtle. And so I, I even get the, how further people think that they are the same person. But uh, I would be shocked uh, to, to say they were the same person. I, I would be... I, I would be shocked. Um, but um, yeah, this is a this is a fun conspiracy, conspiracy theory from the past. But now we do know Tristan's face. He's kind of shown it. Uh, obviously, it's his album art cover for his debut album. But I guess we'll have to wait till we see Bracken's face to really know for sure. Skrillex was never originally a one-man project, but a collective with Sonny as the frontman. The sound design was done by Noisia, 16-bit, and Spore. Uh, Sonny was basically given a box of Legos that he could put together. That's why that uh, after Skrillex's initial success, Sonny, Sonny lost his laptop and never really sounded the same. This is a very interesting idea, and I don't know where this would stem from initially, but I can sort of see how one could get to this conclusion. But uh, I just, I, I think, I think no, obviously this is uh, obviously the video on, on conspiracy theories, but uh, this is definitely a fun one that really isn't, it's not harmful anyway, and it is an interesting idea, but I, I think if anything, that would then, you would have to then imply that Skrillex as a like kind of alias here was also an industry industry plant of sorts because um, unless you're kind of saying that after the kind of the explosion of of Skrillex and the debut album and all this kind of stuff, then it sort of became a, a other project. But I, I doubt that's sort of what it was. So I think you're saying a lot of things here, a lot of connecting points to say that Skrillex was... Um, never originally a one-man project. I think if anything, it would have to be, have formed into one over time. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting take, interesting take. Uh, but I think it's, it's just Sunny experimenting with lots of sounds over different um, ideas, but, or different areas. But yeah, I, Sunny, I think is just a producer that really does whatever he wants. And that's sort of why the style changed after he lost the laptop. But uh, interesting, interesting take. Speaking of industry plants, color base is an industry planted genre. Uh, this would also have to imply a lot of different things that I think is interesting because um, Colorbase was pretty much pioneered and started by Chime, uh, who then sort of uh, put together Rushdown, and then Rushdown was the sort of premier Colorbase a label of sorts. It was where you could go anywhere to find color-based stuff. And so uh, this is an interesting one, and I would say no because... Um, color base still really isn't that popular. Like, I, I think for it to be an industry industry plant, it has to be something that's that hit the mainstream. So, like, I would say maybe Slap House was a plant where a whole bunch of people got together and it's like, hey, we're gonna make just this style and make this, and we're gonna make this the new radio sound. But um, yeah, color base still really isn't a popular genre uh, in terms of mainstream success and or real streams. And so, uh, I, I would be hard pressed to say that this is an industry plant. 
Xylent will release an album this year. Even though there's no confirmed news of it, he has a habit of dropping a banger album every four years and disappearing. His last album was 2019, four years ago. So if my thinking is right, we may have a new Xylent album on our hands. Um, I am pretty confident we are getting a Xylent album this year. Uh, and I can say that with, I, I would say... 80% accuracy that we would we will get a Xylent album this year. Uh, for those of you that don't know, there was a little bit of an Easter egg in the Xylent website that kind of said um, some numbers. I can't remember what it was exactly, or just like a, a it was it said like coming soon or a date. Or, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's sort of teasing at a new project to come. And yes, the four years, four years, four years does make um, sense. And uh, I think we will get a Xylent album. I think it's going to be late 2023. I think this is like a, a middle to late November, or even early December. I think we will get a Xylent album. Where it's going to be, I think it's a better question. But yeah, that was the sort of EDM conspiracy theories. Let me know what you think of these uh, conspiracy theories in any and all thoughts. You can put them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear more if you've got more conspiracy theories and more thoughts. Uh, I'd love to keep the conversation going in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.